Yeah, that's not hard, that's not. Let's see if I put it. Yeah, it's here. Oh, crap. audio Any signal? Okay, do I do audio? No problem. No problem. All right, so you need this. Yeah, well, I no, 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 you don't need this. What do you I need? I started to let that one fit. How much time that that two months might be almost finished? So you salvage the, the testimony. Okay. So you, you just need this video signal. The video and audio. Back, 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 back again at the end. All right, cool. Yeah. Oh, you saw the net up. Yeah. So, Akil, do you want me to run this night? So, after I run the end, do you want me to run this night? So we saw that up. So I'm just waiting for this to finish first to switch over. Okay. 
Very good. Yes. Dah ada set depan dia dulu. Yes, right. So that's in order, right? The next one is disciplines and credit at the end and then slide through again. Hey, I can do
And that's what it says that on that Saturday before school open, he would get his normal country urge before he needs to work. Further, on one of his visits to the country, that is where he came in contact with his wife, only to realize that she was living in France, remember by her grandparents, but her mother lived not too far from him. So you know, any opportunity he had to come down, he get to come down so he would come because he would get the opportunity to see Christine. And faith would have it, Everything they just hook up from them and everything will come so slowly up to this day. Gerald, to remind one of the things that I remember I recall is the way Gerald made a decision when we discovered that mommy started having signs of dementia. He committed to spending two nights a um, week with mommy. And um, every morning he would call me, whether he was there that night or Either way, he'd, he'd, he'd show up at mommy's house the next morning, either way, and he'd provide me with an update and what took place and how mommy was coming along. And uh, often he'd send me a text message or he would say hi, it would be a question mark, and I knew that he wanted to talk. Either he wanted to talk about something related to mommy or it could have been something that bothered him. But we communicated regularly. He just came. Mm. Uh, Often when I need some advice, assistance, I would call him. He would not only suggest things that I do, he even follow up by calling and, and asking me, have you done this or have you done that? Um, he, he just seemed to, to be that joyful person when, 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 whenever he, he, he does anything, he always lights up the place, tend to give some kind of a, a, a joke, some kind of a smile, and the whole thing is that is that Gerald seemed to go the extra mile to make other people happy, right? And I think it's because he believed that when he make people happy, right, he of himself does be happy. He was a really, really joyous person enjoy the simple things of life and as all who would know him was happy at every occasion and every moment. man alive. Not many songs epitomizes a man's true spirit, but this song was his ideal song, his theme song. He was, a, he was indeed the happiest man alive. My dad was a life wire, a connector, a beautiful soul that made others around him happy, a spark that was happiest when others around him were happy. It is said that happiness is the measure of success. If that is true, I can think of no one else who has ever been as successful as my dad. His happiness came from his unwavering belief in God, his cheerful and thankful spirit, his love for family and friends, 
and his need to see everyone succeed. One to two of the most loving immigrant parents in the hills of Eastern Cory, my dad was very proud of his heritage and where he came from. A proud man who came from Labatton. It's something he would never let you forget. It must be here where his spirit of gratitude was booted. People often ask me, how could your dad always be so happy? I think a massive reason for this happiness has to do with his spirit of gratitude. It was in 1979, my dad met the love of his life. He found his South woman. And in 1985, they were married. Once married, they stayed with Auntie Florence for some time. I know this because he always told the story of walking down the hill in Caledonia to collect water for the house. In reminiscing on these stories, he always spoke of the importance of those days forming him. After moving into his family house, he used every penny he had to create a home for his wife. They were the Scranton days, as he used to say. But through it all, with the most supportive wife at his side, they progressed and welcomed a little boy into the world on September the 30th, 1988. Three years after their wedding, their wedding they welcomed the child we will eventually call Shadow because of his similarities to his father. Being a father of one must have been a joyous encounter for him because three years later, he and mommy welcomed another boy. The boy who was always seen everywhere with him. Trust me, my dad was blessed because after having two boys to follow him around, he finally got what he was hoping for, a beautiful princess. <laughs> his family was now set. His supportive wife by his side and his three bundles of joy with him. He spent every waking moment supporting his family. Instead of seeing the glass as half empty, he was grateful there was even a glass. When I got in an accident a few years ago, my dad had not an interest in the world about the state of the vehicle. If you got the cheesiest gift for Christmas from him, or him, sorry, you would never know it because he was such a grateful soul. He said, thank you for everything. I have learned that his secret to happiness is gratitude. Isaac was not just a father, not just my father. He was my dad, not content with just being a footnote in our lives, but being a massive character, a man to look up to, someone to follow, someone to admire, someone to be proud of, and someone to brag about, someone to learn from, and someone to respect, someone to listen to, and someone to talk to, someone to try and impress, but also someone that was proud of us regardless, and someone most of all with whom to share everything this wonderful world has to offer. He was full of life. Just take a look at his life and you would see that he never subscribed to the mantra of you only live once. Rather, he lived by the mantra you only die once. He lived every day so intensely so intimately, so passionately. Nobody can be perfect, but my dad was as close to being the, the most perfect dad anyone could have. You may know him as a person that is always smiling, but in my very formative years, I knew a disciplinarian. Together with my mother, they ran a tight ship, built on values of discipline, togetherness, respect, and a firm belief in God. We always eat at the table as a family, but not a grain of rice could touch our lips without a prayer to the Almighty. Every single Saturday evening without fail, we, would, we found ourselves in church. As the older brother, if my brother or sister did something wrong and I was around, all we, all we would hear was his signature stoops and the sound of a belt jingling before some good old-fashioned licks is shared. 
my daddy was our biggest supporter. It started so simply on our annual trip to the States by Auntie Debbie, the director of all the tiny surprises, Akil, wanted to surprise our parents for their anniversary by doing a model show. Being the kid that I was, I was most excited. There I was, modeling down Auntie Debbie's step, happy to put on a performance, only to be met by a smiling, overjoyed man in the living room, excited to support our surprise show. There is something about always knowing, no matter what, that your father is always there to support you with the biggest smile. He was always our biggest supporter. And trust me, it didn't stop there. Once again, the family director envisioned the plot to sing a song for Granny's and Grandpa's 50th anniversary. The director informed the producer, Daddy, of our plans and the production started. We spent days learning lyrics that Daddy printed for us, practicing from the CD Daddy copied for us and tested our performance in front of a father that was too excited for the crowd to see his children. The day came for the performance and Daddy, my Daddy, was the mastermind we have behind every inch of the performance ensuring the sound was perfect before we got on the stage and we were ready. Our daddy stood in front of the stage, eager to see his three children belt out a tune that will forever be a momentum in our family. His smile was infectious and we performed the best we could have. After that day, I fully believed I had the singing abilities of Celine Dion not knowing my dad was simply a man who loved and supported his children, even if we sounded like wailing cows. My dad was also an amazing husband. What a great example he showed us. For 35 years, he was, according to my mother, the best husband she could ever ask for. They were like salt and pepper, inseparable. They went everywhere together. They did everything together. The truth is, my father spoiled my mother, and he made sure that we all did so as well. Down to the very end, my dad did whatever he did to give my mother her dream kitchen. To mommy, he was the love of her life, the best father to her amazing children, her traveling partner, her party and companion, her driver, her stubborn husband. She was a queen to his king. This man loved his family. Upon my dad's retirement, I watched how he lovingly took care of his mother. Right up until she passed, he made sure she wanted for nothing. It was a telling example of how a child should treat his mother. I have seen this man do some remarkable things that will forever be lodged into my mind. I always remember this one Carnival Tuesday. My father was in the grandstand. My, my family was in the grandstand. My dad had just finished playing mass. So he came to us. Not too long, uh, not too long before he came to us, there was this man that was clearly homeless, poorly dressed, with a very pungent smell that somehow got into the stands and was asking people for help. I watched almost everyone turn up their nose to the man clutching what they had very close to them and showing the man as though he was some sort of unwanted dog. The man saw my dad and went to him. My father shook the man's hand, proceeded to listen to the man and gave the man some financial assistance. That was the mark of a champion to me. My dad was a wise, sharp mind, but I also knew him to be an incredibly hard worker. If the average person puts in two hours of work into something, he put in four. It was just how he was able to continuously climb to the pinnacle in his chosen field. I have received so many stories about my dad over the past few days and many from his past colleagues. With these conversations, what these conversations have all revealed was that a huge part of success was due to his innate ability to communicate with people, to be down to date, to be approachable and friendly. Whether it was at the Ministry of Housing, 
Public Utilities, Office of the Prime Minister, Ministry of Works, or the Ministry of Labor, the same things have been said. He was a jovial spirit that people gravitated towards. Despite of his situation, I will always remember what my dad did when he was admitted into the hospital on his last Monday. Unable to talk to us or even move properly, he raised his right hand to the center of his forehead and completed the sign of the cross. What this told me was that even down to the very end, my dad knew that only God was in control. To say we loved our dad would be an understatement and to say we're going to miss him would be perhaps the greatest understatement known to man. But what will live on in us is that jovial spirit, that kindred vibe, his spirit of humanity. His presence will encourage us to continue being the, the happiest family alive. So good morning, everyone. Shall we all stand at this moment? And as we gather to celebrate the life of our brother Isaac James, In the name of the Father, Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. In the waters of baptism, our brother Isaac Gerard James died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May he now share with him eternal glory. Thank you. 
Let us pray. O God, who are mercy for sinners and happiness for the saints, give, we pray, to your servant Isaac, for whom today we perform the fraternal offices of burial, a share in your chosen ones of the blessedness you give, so that on the day of the resurrection, freed from the bonds of mortality, he may come before your face. O Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Be seated for the first reading. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The virtuous man, though he die before his time, will find rest. Length of days is not what makes age honorable, nor number of years the true measure of life. Understand it, this is man's great years. Untarnished life, this is right old age. He has sought to please God, so God has loved him. As he was living among sinners, he has been taken up. He has been carried off so that evil may not warp his understanding or treachery seduce his soul. For the fascination of evil throws the things into the shade, and the whirlwind of desire corrupts a simple heart. Coming to perfection in so short a while, he achieved long life. His soul being blessing, sorry, his soul being pleasing to the Lord, he has taken him quickly from the wickedness around him. Yet people look on, uncomprehending. It does not enter their heads that grace and mercy await the chosen of the Lord, and protection his holy ones. This is the word of the Lord. Oh, 
היה לנו כאילו איזה ראש מנהמה, כאילו הכל לא סביר כאילו בן אדם בא. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone. And I'd like to take the opportunity to thank um, Reverend Barry Streets, Father Martin, for his very warm and most gracious welcome to this parish church of St. John's. And um, indeed, it is always a joy to be on this side of Trinidad and Spain. And I want to take this opportunity as well to say to Auntie Gemma, to Akil, Sanya, Jabari, and Anita, the other members of the James clan, family members of Brother James, express deepest sympathies to all of you, especially understanding that Mr. James, Mr. Isaac was not only a father, but he was a good human being, a good Christian, a good Catholic. He was a good person, proud of his roots. He's very empathetic, showed sympathy, he entered into a person's reality. He was a good citizen of Trinidad and Spain. So we are gathered today to celebrate the life of this man. You know, I often say, let me test to see how holy someone is. So while I was driving up the road from Point Fortin this morning, and you know Point Fortin is not sour, long distance, but joyful. As I was driving, and I realized that traffic was building up, 
I say, Mr. Isaac, I'm going to do your funeral. You better pray that everything is up. And the more I pray, ask him to pray for me. I say, well, I'm going to do your funeral. Pray to God that things will ease up. And you know the prayers will be quiet. So I want to thank God for the gentleman I knew for all these years. No one would have known that he was a man of such tremendous clout. No one would have assumed that he was a man with such high profile in Trinidad and Spain. I have been to many of his offices as when he was PS. I have gone to his place to pray with him. I have been in his office talking to him. We spoke about matters, all these things. And many persons, even from Sawa, never knew what he did. So when he came to Mass on a Saturday, he sat around this place, cool and calm, and rocking back. It was Sister Gemma who did most of the talking and most of the walking around. But I believe that behind every man, good man, there is a good woman. And behind every good man, every good woman, there is a good man. And that was the case with Auntie Gemma and Brother Isaac. A solid couple. Solid as a rock. And you know the thing about it? I remember, you know the thing about his church? He would make contributions. He would do all kinds of things. But low profile. And one of the beautiful things that I can testify about in the brother being a godly man, they never really missed the mass in sound. They never ever missed the mass in sound. They were religiously present for Saturday evening's mass, receiving communion, participating the way they could. That's why I say, blessed are the point spirit, for theirs they shall see God. Blessed and humble, very humble man. And I remember quite clearly that he used to always tell me about, I used to ask, we used to see each other at the rambles. And many times at the rambles, you need to stop a little bit, Jabari couldn't go there that fast. Auntie Gemma, we are the back, doing our own thing. And one of the things he always said to me, his father, you see this exercising thing? This is what keeps my mental health in check, especially with the pressure of the job. And we used to speak a lot about mental health. The, uh, and he used to tell me, father, the more I exercise, the more, the better my mental health. And that is true. So some of you must learn that in order to ease your mental pressure, go exercise, do something, get busy, get at work. And you know, another outstanding thing is when Mr. Isaac and some families of the parish, every time the Saturday evening crew, there were lines. I think the last time we had a big line, I was by Gregory. Drinks flowing, everything flowing. Food, drinks, everything flowing. Sometimes a line used to happen right in front of the church after Saturday evening's mass. And of course, we used to go up by Auntie Gemma them in order to line and enjoy the food. And especially for Jabari to show up and to tell me, Father, come and see the different changes made in the house. But I remember quite clearly. One of the things about Brother Isaac is that he ensured as a man and as a family man with his wife that they ensured that their children were taken good care of, that their children were properly educated, that their children would have formed a good foundation so that they can live lives worthy of their vocation. They set the platform because they realized that education was the passport to the future. And I recall the time when Mr. Isaac drove me down to town 
And then we passed and he told me, Father, I want to bring you where I'm from. I want to take you, Father, to my mother's house. That's where I came from, Father. Sometime, somewhere down, down this way. He brought me to see the house. Just to allow me to say, and he was saying to me, Father, consistently, I love this place. Father, I love my people. Oh, Father, I love where I'm from. And Father, I'm not ashamed to say to people where I'm from. And that shows the character and quality of the man. And another beautiful thing about it is that he used this time he started to treasure in a good way. And I saw a movement. So I used to laugh. Mr. Isaac would get an automobile. It would move from him to somebody else. And it would move from a somebody else to another somebody else. A kid, you know what I'm talking about. And then when you hear the shout, all the kids were driving a vehicle. And I used to always laugh at him because he told me, Father, I have a plan. And he used to call me to do that little blessing and so forth. Equipping his children for a better future. Understanding that some of the things that he experienced in life, his children must never experience such things. Make it easier for them. So I bless God for that. And my dear brothers and sisters, when we think of the life of Brother Isaac, we saw in our brother a good, God-fearing man. A man who loved the Lord with all of his heart, with all of his strength, and with all of his soul, and a man who loved his neighbor as his himself. Love the Lord with all of his strength, everything. And you would not, you would not realize because of his way of moving, his personality. He used to enjoy praise and worship. He used to be dancing in the pew. He loved to dance and sing and so forth. I do not know if he would have made it in the choir, but he used to sing. He was always a joyful man. A smile on his face. Because remembering that the joy of the Lord is my strength. And we need to rejoice in all circumstances. Before his situation with what he was, what, right when he took a toll on him in the end, he explained all these things to me. As we used to chat, we used to speak at high levels. And then, he paid me when Jabari called me and told me about his dad not feeling too well, not doing well. I said to myself, okay, cool, but maybe we'll have time. I suspect we'll never have time. And that is why I said to Jabari on that day, understanding that it would have been tight for me, I said to Jabari and the family, Make sure you all call Father. Get in touch with the priest. Get in touch with the priest. Tell, talk to Father. And I was happy. Father told me he went and he, 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 he ministered to Mr. Isaac in the end. Gave him communion. Put for the journey via the tomb. Are you with me? So I thank the Lord for the life of Brother Isaac. I thank the Lord for his compassion. I thank the Lord for his love. I thank the Lord for his concern for other persons. I thank the Lord for his service to Trinidad and Tobago. This man moved from ministry to ministry. He gave me the list of ministers he has worked with in the past and he was working with. He took me through all the ropes. And I said to myself, you know this man is such a high profile man and he comes to church in summer. Nobody knows except his family and persons in Italy. That is what you call humility. To be humble because the human person has nothing to boast of. Mr. Isaac was indeed a man who epitomized humility. 
a very humble man, a down to earth man, a man who was earthly, a man who was not so flashy, but a man of substance, a down to earth man. And that is why I believe that even while sickness um, took a toll on him, he reclined and he gave everything to Almighty God. I believe that he was at peace with himself. I believe that he was in a place where he could say, Lord, Lord have thine own way. Like the song of Jim Reeves, Lord, have thine own way. For thou art the potter and we are the clay. Melt me and mold me. See till all can see me. Christ on the altar living in me. And that is what life calls us to friends. To surrender to Almighty God. To surrender to Jesus everything. Surrender sickness to God. Surrender disappointment to God. Surrender health issues to God. Surrender problems to God. Surrender our joys and sorrows to God. Surrender everything to God. Because when we surrender everything to God and when the praises go up, the blessings come down in the name of Jesus. And there is one thing I can say to you as I end. No grave shall keep Brother Isaac's body down. No grave shall keep his body down. Because why? There is a place, I know, I believe, that cancer cannot destroy. Cancer may destroy the body. Cancer may take a toll on the mind. Cancer may break people down. But cancer can never destroy the soul. Because the soul of the virtuous is in the hands of the Lord. No torment, neither cancer can touch them. Hello, do we have people in this church here? What, what kind of, what kind of things are? What, what, what is that? Only one person I know dead here. And he's if the Lord is what I say. Physically dead, but with the Lord. So you look alive now. And I want us to be strong and courageous. I want to say to Auntie Gemma and the family, take heart, be strong. First, if you are in faith, it's not easy. The, the hardest time for you all will be after today. But God will give you all the strength. Trust in the Lord, Auntie Gemma, and the children, and Anita. Lean not according to your understanding. Give God the glory. Let me give you a little trick that works. See all the little prayers he would talk growing up. These little prayers will come in handy when you begin to say, Lord, why did this happen? God will answer your prayer with the little prayers. So I ask of you all to stay strong. I ask you all, Akil, now is the time to step up as the man in the home now. Holy. Oh, he's taking Jabari. No, Jabari is too young. Who is the man of the home again? No, Jabari be your deputy. <laughs> Take all the position in the house. No, you all will say who is who when you go home. Because <laughs> Jabari already pulled up this kind of um, he's Mickey Mouse shades and looking at me. <laughs> Listen. Make sure the two of you Look out for mommy and sister and the family. I am asking of Brother Isaac's family and Auntie Gemma's family, don't abandon them at this time. They, they need you all. They need you all. Are you with me? Support them. Let us love them and let us care for them. As you know, friends for life. We are friends for life. You know that we are friends for life. I don't have to tell you that. You know. Because if you want friends for life, I would never leave point for time from here this morning. At the street. I don't mama guide me. We are friends for life. And I love the James family. I love Mr. Isaac with all my heart. He's been a very good man to me personally and an outstanding man to the church in St. John the Baptist and Mount Campbell family. 
So, Sister German family, we love you all. That is why the people are here this morning, because we love you all. We say to you all, stay strong. Be the best that you can be. And don't forget, anytime, according to Mariah, Mariah, anytime you need a friend, we will be there. God bless and stay strong. Or they could clap better than that, you know. Because I know the more you clap, the better the collection will be. And their friends in Christ. Lord, the Almighty Father, raise Christ his son from the dead. In confidence, we ask him to save all his people, living and the dead. For our brother Isaac James, who in baptism has been the pledge of eternal life, that he may now be admitted to the company of the saints. Lord, hear us. For our brother, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that he may be raised up on the last day. Lord, hear us. For our diseased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, and they may see God face to face. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For the family and friends of our brother Isaac James, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith, that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our shelter and our strength, and then also for God's protection in all we do. Lord, hear us. Lord, hear us. May we now in silence offer our own personal intentions unto God. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. God, our strength, you listen in love to the cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed brothers and sisters, especially for our friend and brother Isaac James. May you cleanse them of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We are this to Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, my dear brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be made acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy Jews. Be, be near, O Lord, we pray. To your servant Isaac, on whose funeral day we offer you the sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to him, or any human fault have affected him, it may by your love and gift be, a forgive, be, be forgiven and wiped away for Christ our oh Lord. Amen. Um, for Christ our oh Lord. Amen. That's right. I want to hear you all, you know. I want to hear you all, okay? All right? I want to hear you. Friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is indeed truly right and just. Lord, beauty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of the blessed resurrection is done. That those saddened by the, the, the certainty of dying, might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. So now we join archangels, saints, and angels on endeavor of praise. <laughs>
as we celebrate the memorial, the memorial of his death and resurrection. Give for you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation. Give me the thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your choice virtual world and bring her to the fullness of charity. To you, Francis, our Pope, and to Jason, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Isaac James, who you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was not able to son in a death like he is, must be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And our one died in your mercy. We come them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, which are just Paul, and Joseph, the Saint Apostles, Saint John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may Mary to be called as eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. God, the Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor to yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and from by the invitation, we pray together. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant us peace in all our days. By the help of your mercy, we always be kept free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, the sent apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of each other, and graciously grant the peace and unity in accordance with your will, to live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O oh Lord, that the servant Isaac, for whom we've celebrated this Paschal Sacrament, may pass over to a dwelling place of light and peace for Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Dearly beloved friends, writes of final commendation. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our dear brother Isaac. May our farewell express our affection for him. May it ease our sadness and strength and hope. One day we shall joyfully greet him again when the love of Christ which conquers all things destroys even death itself. To you, O Lord, we commend the soul of our dear brother Isaac, your servant. In the sight of this world, he is now dead. In your sight may he live on forever. Forgive whatever sin he may have committed due to human frailty. And in your goodness grant him eternal peace. We ask this for Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Friends, we are gathered here today to commend our brother Isaac to the Lord, our Father, and to commit his body to the earth, for we are dust. In the spirit of faith in the resurrection of Christ Jesus from the dead, let us raise our voices in prayer. Because the Lord has chosen to call him from this life to himself, we commit his body to the earth, for we are dust, and to dust we shall all return.
and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful. You attend to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people cry out to you in the need and in and strengthen in strengthen their hope in lasting goodness. We ask this for Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. We ask this for Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto him, O oh Lord. Amen. Let perpetual light shine upon him. May he rest in peace. Amen. And may his soul and the souls of the faithful departed for the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. So brothers and sisters, may the angels of the Lord lead you, my friend Isaac, into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you and lead you to the holy city, the new and eternal Jerusalem. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham. And where Lazarus is born no longer, may you find eternal rest. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and your mind in the knowledge and love of God and his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Funeral Mass is ended. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you. 
Thank you.